Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Eves. Thanks for joining me today. In this video I will demonstrate two of the methods used for TrustSec propagation, namely inline tagging and Security Group Tag Exchange Protocol or SXP. This slide describes many of the propagation methods available to us today. Firstly, Security Group Tag Exchange Protocol or SXP can be used to propagate IP to security group tag mappings over TCP peer-to-peer -peer connections to be used by enforcement points further within the network. Another method is inline tagging which inserts the security group tag associated with a source IP address into every packet originating from that source. The tag is embedded within the Cisco metadata field of the layer 2 frame. As shown in the slide, security group tags or SGTs can be sent over wide area networks using protocols like GRE, IPsec, DMVPN and GitVPN. SXP is very flexible in that it can be aggregated and reflected as depicted in this slide. Identity Services Engine or ICE itself supports SXP and can centralize static IP to HTT mappings as well as distribute dynamic mappings. Propagation via VXLAN is an option. The security group tag, otherwise known as scalable group tag, is embedded in the VXLAN header and is the method of choice used in the Cisco Software Defined Access campus fabric. Finally, the ICE PX grid system can be used to share group information. Third parties make use of this capability as well as Cisco platforms like Firepower Management Center, Stealthwatch and the Web Security Appliance. Inline tagging and SXP are extensively used in traditional data centers deployed using the Nexus product family. This demonstration then concentrates on these two methods of propagation, namely SXP and inline tagging. This is a diagram of an example where both propagation methods are used together. On the right hand side you can see data center servers here connected to a data center switch. On this switch the servers are statically classified with security group tags 11, 14 and 19. The subsequent IP to SGT mappings are then propagated from the data center switch to the ASA enforcement point via SXP. On the left hand side of the diagram you can see a user has connected a PC to an access switch. On this access switch the user has been dynamically classified with security group tag 17. This is accomplished through the use of 802.1x and authorization provided by the Cisco Identity Services Engine or ICE. Subsequently, traffic flowing from the user's PC that traverses through the links denoted by the thick red line have the associated SGT embedded within the CMD field of the layer 2 frame. So these links with a red line have been enabled for inline tagging. So let's have a look at the data center switch and the SXP configuration. So this is the data center switch we're using. If I do a show run include SXP, this is some SXP configuration. We've got an SXP connection. The peer is 10362, which is the ASA. And if we do show CTS SXP connections, we can see a bit few more details including the mode is an SXP speaker. So this data center switch is speaking or sending IP to SGT maps towards the, um, towards the ASA over the SXP connection. Now let's have a look to see if there are any IP to SGT maps on this box to send over SXP. We can do show CTS SXP, show CTS role based SGT map all and the table is empty so there are no maps to be sent to the ASA. Right now let's go over and have a look at the ASA itself. This is the ASA. To look at the SXP configuration we can go to configuration firewall identity by TrustSec. You can see that SXP is enabled and this is the configuration of SXP, the peer address 10361 being the data center switch. To look at the status of SXP we can go to monitoring properties we can minimize these menus, go to identity by TrustSec and SXP connections. 
you can see this is their SXP connection connected to the data center switch and the status is on so we're up and running to the data center switch right have a look to see if there are any IP to ST maps on this ASA that have been downloaded from the data center switch we can click on IP mappings and the table is empty we can click on refresh the table is empty in this ASA so that corresponds with the empty table that we saw in the data center switch so let's go back to the data center switch and we can actually configure some mappings if I capture the configuration for this we can configure three mappings on the switch and the show command shows these mappings resident on the switch so if we do a show CTS role based SGT map all so we've configured them so we have these three IP to SGT maps configured on the data center switch so due to SXP being up and operational to the ASA these mappings should have been forwarded to the ASA so let's go back to the ASA click on refresh and there they are so these mappings have been down configured on this data center switch and downloaded to the ASA now back at the diagram on the user side a user with the username of TSNG1 is logged onto the network using 802.1x and on the access switch we should be able to see the authenticated session so let's let's log on to the access switch we can this is our access switch it's a 3850 and we should be able to see the authenticated session and there we go this is the MAC address of the PC that's connected we're looking at the authenticated session we can see the MAC address the IP 104110 we've logged on with TSNG1 and this is interesting it's got a SGT value of 17 so this is authenticated and authorized by identity services engine and through the policy configured in ICE it's downloaded and security group tag 17 to the switch Now we can have a look at the IP trusted map on this switch. If we do show CTS role based SGT map all. So on on this access switch, we have this 104110 IP address of the client mapped to SGT 17, which is dynamically allocated. Now traffic source from this user client is sent towards the ASA, and the inline tagging, which is configured um, will insert the assigned tag 17 into the CMD field of the layer 2 frames so a capture command on the ASA shows the tag traffic coming in from the user client so if we log on to the ASA this is our ASA we can run a capture command to see what's coming in from that from that client on the left hand side so if we do a capture we can just call call it whatever we like, I'll just call it test capture type is inline tag, I'm going to just have a look at tag 17 that should be coming from that user interface is on the outside interface and let's have a look at them in real time so this is a capture on the ASA we can see that inline tag 17 from 104110 has got traffic you know, coming coming into the outside interface. So this is a debug which shows inline tag information coming from the user. And so it's a very very good command to use. It's a useful command. Bearing in mind this warning, so you know an excessive amount of non-display packets. So you may may be performance limitations depending on the configuration and the uh, the the state of your ASA. So that's inline tagging go back to the diagram 
So, the ASA is receiving tag traffic in line from the access switch and it has also received IP terrestrial mappings from the data center switch via SXP. So it has the information it needs to enforce a policy from the user client using tag 17 to data center server group tags 11, 14 and or 19. Now enforcement policies on the ASA are configured under configuration file access rules. So if we go back to the ASA we can go to configuration firewall access rules and this is where you can configure your policies however TrustSec enforcement is the topic of another demonstration so this concludes this demonstration of TrustSec propagation we've shown um, SXP um, downloading or forwarding IP terrestrial maps and we've also seen inline tagging and showing the capture information on the ASA thanks very much for listening